Now it's time to start coding. But again, we'll not be writing a lot of code in this particular video because we have to also understand some theory part before we go ahead. But we'll start with coding and then we'll get into theory. So what I'm going to do is, we got these two things here. That perfectly works. Let me create a Python file and let's name this as main.py. So what exactly I'm trying to do here? So let's say whenever a user visits the website, of, of course we are not buying any domain here, but we'll run this project in the local. Okay, and the way you can access that is by saying localhost colon. So instead of 3000, let's go for 8000. What are these things here? Now, if you are new to web development, this localhost, see, whenever you talk about any website or any web application, you have to deploy it somewhere, right? So maybe you're deploying on some server, maybe provided by Amazon. So what you do is you deploy your application there and it is running on the server. Now, if, if you want to access it, you have to use the IP address because every server will have their own IP address. And since we don't want to remember the IP address, instead of that, we use domain names, right? So whenever you go to any website, like when you go to Node.js, this is their website domain. If you go to Fast, this is a website domain. In the same way, if you want to access a particular website, you have to provide a domain name. Now, since we don't have a domain, I'm running on my own machine. So I can use the IP address. Now, since we want the IP address of the same machine, I can use localhost. Next, in your machine, you can run multiple services, multiple server services. And how, how will you differentiate between these services? And that's where we can use something called a port number. Example, when I was running a React, React was running on port number 3000. The fast API will be running on Ubicon server. And by default, the port number will be 8000. So when I say enter, it says the site cannot be reached. Why? It's because our server is not running. So what we can do is we can run the server. But before we run the server, we need to return something, right? So let's say the server is running and you want to show some output here. So when you go to this home page, it should return, let's say, welcome to the Lisco track, something like that. Now, in order to achieve that, what you can do is you can create a function because in Python, when you want to achieve something, you create a function. But again, it is giving you some, some suggestions. I don't want to use the copilot suggestion, so I will just snooze it for some time now. And okay, so let's create a function. So I will say def and the job of this particular function is to greet the user. So I can say greet, okay, simple function. And I'm going to print Welcome to the list code track. Okay, simple stuff, nothing fancy. I want to print this, okay? Now there are two problems here and I will tell you those problems in some time. So I will just save this. Now question arise, how will you run this? Now, of course you can write, this is your Python file. You can simply say Python main, Python space main dot py. And this will, this should be able to print. It's just that we are uh, running it, but we are not calling it. Okay, so we have to call the great function. Okay, so let's call this and run and you can see it is printing on the console but we don't want to print on the console right we want to print on the web page now in that case i don't have to call it here it should be called through the web page so whenever i refresh this page or go to this home page it should call that particular function and it should return this welcome to the list code track so that means we we are not supposed to print it we are supposed to return it to whoever is calling it so printing is not an idea we have to return this okay that solves one problem and once we save it Let's go back, run, uh, it will still not work. Reason, the server is not running, okay? Even if you have the code, the server is not running. Now, how will you run the server? Of course, you will not be using Python because Python is for the console based. This is where we have to use a web server. Now, one of the web server we have already installed is Ubicon, if you remember. So we can use Ubicon here and we can run it. So I can simply say Ubicon. Then we have to provide the file name and then we have to specify hyphen hyphen reload. Okay, now let me try to run this and let's see what you get. Okay, it says it is trying to, will watch the changes in the directory because reload means the moment you say save, it will just reload. Uh, Ubicon running on server this. Okay, you can see the port, the address here. Now 127.0.0 .0 is your own machine and then 8000 is a port number. But here, somewhere here it says error, loading the ASGI app, which is your web server import string main must be in a format. Okay, so it needs a format. If you can see, this is the format it is expecting here. So it's module and attribute. So we are specifying the module here, which is main, this is your module, because that's what you're creating here. But something is missing, some attribute is missing. Uh, okay, let's go step by step. Now what is missing is, we are using a web framework, which is uh, fast API. 
and nowhere we have mentioned that we are using fast api so we need to create the object of fast api and let's say the object name is app equal to and fast api we can simply use fast api here and create the object for fast api but then this is not happy it says uh, fast api is not defined okay why is not defined is because it is defined it's just that we have to import it so i will say import fast api um, no i have to import fast api but this will be coming from fast api library yeah so from fast api import fast api okay and then you can create the object so this fast api is the library this is your class i hope we can see the documentation yes so you can see this is a class cool uh, and then we can create the object and now since we have the object here when i run this now so i will just i can say control c to stop the server and come back to the main screen and now when i run this i have to pass main colon app so you have to also mention the object name cool now it should work enter the server is running congratulations we can have a round of applause something is working after a very long time and now it is running on the server that's cool so when i go to this particular page in fact the same page we are doing here and now if i hit this again oh okay we got some output server is running but it says not found okay so there were two problems before first the server was not running second we were not getting whatever we want to print uh, but at least one problem is solved the server is running but we are not able to print so let's solve that and before we understand that let's move towards something called rest api see before we go move into rest api we got a client and we got a server now what's the job of a server is to give services right now this can be a file server this can be a web server this can be some other server now when you say it's a file server the job here is to give files to whoever who is asking for this file so let's say there's a client a and says hey i want that file it will go to the request goes to the server file server says okay let me search for the file and yeah i got the file this is your file that's how the file server works and it uses its own protocol to do that there's something called ftp or sftp if you want to secure it uh, on the other hand for the web server what's the job of a web server to give the data to the user now normally this data can be in the format of html or it can be format of json now why html is because in the real world we all use web pages right so when you go to google when you go to any website like amazon you when you go there you see the amazon page right you see all the products now you are able to see that beautiful page is because of the html and css and javascript now all these things coming to the client side from the server so when a client says hey give me amazon.com the amazon.com says okay these are the files take it and view on the browser so that works right but the problem is when you create this type of application because see one application needs multiple things there are multiple layers here user normally uses front end but the data is stored in the database so we got the front end and we got database so there are two apart two things apart now user is concerned about the data so of course user wants the data that is coming from the database so don't you think the front end should be able to interact with the back end directly or with the database directly uh we can't do that first of all there are multiple issues one is is not secure directly accessing database second uh you will get data in normal text we want something good and the third problem is to access the database we have to use sql if it is uh, it, if it is a json database and that's why what you do is in fact there are fourth problem also sometimes you don't want data directly what you want is processed data something you have worked on something you have applied filter on or maybe combining multiple things your calculations and some data in this case what you do is you add one component in between which is your back end so we got a front end we got a database database and now we have the back end in between now back end will be written in any language it can be python java javascript doesn't matter right so that's a back end which we built so the request goes from the front end to the back end then back end does the processing of it and applying logic to it fetching data from database if when required and then sending the response to the client or the front end now this can be in two format one from the back end side you can create those beautiful pages and send it to the client side or you can send the front end without the data just the layout just the layout and then you can populate those data later example let's say if your internet is off and you are so let's say you're on your phone you don't have the internet you don't have your mo mobile connection as well 
But still, when you open Instagram, you can see the layout there, right? What is missing is the data. You can't see the image, you can't see the text, but layout is there. It's because the layout is fixed. Now, what is coming from the server is only the data. Now, in which format you will get this data? The format is JSON. Way back, we used to use XML, but it is bulky and a lot of issues. Now, JSON is a perfect format where you can get the data in a structure format and it will be less bulky, easy to understand. And you will see some JSON data if you have not seen that before. So this is the communication. Now, we started with REST and now it's time to talk about REST. Now, when you send this data, the data has to be in a proper format. And that's where we got this term called REST, which is Representational State Transfer. See, whenever the client sends a request for the data, you are sending the state. State means current data or current state of the data. So you're sending the state from the server side to the client side or vice versa. You're sending from data from client side to server side. So you're sending a state. Next, you need to send the state in a representational format. It should be easy to represent. And you are transferring it. And that's why we got this term, which is representational state transfer, REST. So in order for a client to reach to the server, of course, server simply not accept all the requests. Uh, what if you are building a website for the e-commerce and, and the client says, hey, I want to look for a job here. The server can't do that now because server says, okay, I was good with uh, products, but now you're asking for a job. I can't do that. So as a server, it has to open some endpoints. Okay, these are the endpoints. You, you can, you can browse the products, you can buy the product, you can do the payments. So those are the endpoints which we have. And to build these endpoints, we, we use something called APIs, which is Application Programming Interface. So in order to access the server, we have to access their APIs. So if you're a server and if you want client to access you, you have to build those APIs. Okay, so if you want the server or if you want this client to get the data from you, by the way, this is JSON, okay? <laughs> so if you want your client to get data uh, from the server, so ser client has to request and the server has to accept it. Now question arises, how will you accept it? Now. If you go towards something called CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete, these are the CRUD operations, right? Now, for these operations, we got this amazing protocol for the website, which is HTTP, or web applications. So whenever we use internet, we always use HTTP. So if you check here, not here, let's say if you go to this page, HTTP. Yes, there's also S there for security, but the general protocol is HTTP. Now, HTTP, HTTP says, I will give you certain methods to work with. Now, these methods will help you for the current operations. So you got get for reading, you got post for create, you got put for update, and you got delete for delete. In fact, there are more methods which you can use, but these are standard. Uh, I mean, mostly used. Okay, now after all this theory, let's come back here and let's say greet. Now, whenever send, someone is sending the request to the server, we have to understand that for the home page, I want to return this. And to do that, we have to use decorators and you have to say app dot. Now this will have, because app is fast API itself, it has something called methods. Now there are multiple methods here. Uh, we can use get, we can use post, somewhere here there should be post, put, patch, uh, there should be delete as well somewhere up. Yeah, delete. So we got all these methods. I'm going to use get here because we are getting data. So whenever you want to read something from the server, we say get. And we have to also specify the route, the path. Okay, so I'm accessing the home page here. So if you see, I'm trying to access the home page. And to do that, I can say slash. Again, what are the other options? We'll see later. But we have this option here, which is slash. And I think it should work now. So if you do this, the moment you save, you can see it is reloading the server. That's what we wanted. Go back to the home page and refresh. You got it. You can see that it says, welcome to the Discord track. And finally, after talking so long, we are able to get something on the screen. And the code is so simple, right? I mean, look at the things which we have done. Just do the setup once, you get all the libraries. And this much of code and your server is up and running with welcome to the Discord track but who want to use this? We want something advanced. Uh, let's see that in the next video.